Hey, where has this lazy guy been, you ask? And where does he get off trying to do a year-end roundup in the middle of January? Listen, I'm the product of public schools in New Jersey, so you can't blame me for turning in my exam late. Plus, I promise I have a really good excuse. And it's not that my dogs ate my homework. The dogs are my homework, but we'll get to that. First, let's start here. 2020, the year of the flood, both figurative and literal. The crumbling of the shoreline here in Chicago seemed to match that of the greater world. But from the beginning, I knew with certainty how lucky we were. My family was safe, my family was healthy, and my family was financially stable. Three things so many others couldn't say. I knew this, but I didn't feel it. I felt worn down, caring for a newborn, and worn down by worry as Emily worked in the COVID unit most especially worn down by weeks of wondering if we needed to separate our family to keep us all safe. It felt like I was worn by an unrelenting wind that I could never stop walking against. I learned that knowing something and feeling something are two different things. Enter Mayhem and Zero, my forever teachers, who reminded me that although we cannot stop the storm, the storm cannot stop us. I'd wake so many mornings knowing I was grateful for my fortune, yet not feeling it in the slightest. It was my dogs who showed me how to truly feel this bounty in my heart and how to share it with those who I love most. It was a lesson on how to harness the wind no matter which way it blows. And like our kite surfer friend found out, not even the wind can keep up with Ridgebacks. So, we did our in-home workouts. And we joined in on a few distance ones at the park. In fact, sometimes just getting to the park was an unforgettable workout. But what a joyful burden to carry, push, and wrangle. At home, we made forts with the most formidable guards imaginable, and we paid them quite well for their service. We found hidden spaces and quiet places where we could run free. We got knocked down, and we kept on going, feeling grateful for having the strength to lift ourselves up. We sat on trails, on beaches, and on couches, growing together, and of course, learning the best techniques for patting a dog butt. We watched movies with zero at the ready to protect us from the scary parts. The dogs joined us for naps in the sun, and we, well, we joined them for naps on the bed because there are really no rules anymore. There's just love and the warmth of basking in it. By the window, by the fire, and of course, as always, underneath plenty of blankets. This is how I learned to feel what I know, not by ignoring the world and its troubles, or hiding from them, or pretending they don't exist, but by recognizing whatever it is I have to offer as the smallest part of a larger solution begins with how I approach the day. On fiery mornings and gray ones, these two ensured I approached it with a full heart. They say meditation is slow breathing and quiet contemplation. Ridgebacks say, it's panting exertion and wild exuberance. A howl to the heavens which announces, I have this body and this moment, and I intend to use them both to the fullest. So we did just that. It wasn't all joyful, of course. The mundane had its due. But if you have to bathe four creatures, 
I recommend just getting it all done at once. We find the sting of bath water is made easier with good company and good treats. And maybe, just maybe one day, even easier when I let Lincoln do it all for me. Now, as to what I've been keeping in my pocket that's been keeping me from posting here, well, here's a little not so secret. When we brought Quinn home from the hospital, I promised her she'd always have a Ridgeback to hold close. I couldn't promise her much about the troubles of the world, but I could ensure a Ridgeback always stood between her and them. Alas, despite Zero's insistence, he didn't fit in her crib. So I thought more about a dream I quietly had. One where I made a plush Ridgeback doll for my children. The one which I'd never be able to find anywhere else. I dreamed of naming it Echo, in honor of his love. I wanted it to feel as soft as he did in the sun. I wanted it to be a reminder of the legacy of his love. I wanted it to feel like a kiss in the grass, a lick of affection, a sturdy presence nestled against you, and of course, like a lapdog. I had to ask how far was I willing to go to make that dream come true? Quite far as it turns out. I've spent the past couple years designing, prototyping, and finally, making the Ridgeback plush I envisioned. Thankfully, I'm not that smart, because if I realized how much time, money, and hair pulling it would have taken me to do this, I may have been scared off. But in the end, I couldn't be happier with the final result, because I made good on my promise, both to my children and my promise to Echo, to live the lessons he taught me about following my heart. And seeing my children play with the Echo Plush makes me feel my good fortune more deeply than ever before. I wanted to share that feeling with others, so I went ahead and decided to make a few more than just two. The past few months have been a whirlwind of logistics, testing, regulatory hoop jumping, and final preparations. The plush has been most rigorously scrutinized by real Ridgebacks, who welcomed it to Montrose Dog Beach with open jaws. To be clear, this is definitely not a dog toy, though I suspect your Ridgeback won't care about that distinction. Still, it was such a joy to see the dream come true as Penny and Zero thrashed the pup up and down the shore their wild and delighted display matching how I felt. A couple weeks ago, after some final lion training, I opened the doors on sales, and then basically hid like Penny when it's raining. I had no idea what the response would be. But I have been absolutely overwhelmed, in the best way possible. I've shared so much of our journey over the past decade, so knowing that people all over the world were as eager as I was to share this totem of Ridgeback love was such a moving moment. To know that a decade after a puppy insisted he come with me, that years after I lost him, his love still guides me, that it continues to ripple outward. that the plush bearing his name is now held in the arms of children, perched on office desks and tucked next to pillows all across the globe. I don't have the words for the gratitude I feel for Echo and for all of those who have supported this crazy endeavor. Thankfully, I don't need words because I have the feeling and I'll hold it close always. If you'd like to get a Rhodesian Ridgeback Echo Plush of your own before they're gone, the store link is in the comments below. I hope you'll love them as much as I do. Thanks so much for all your support.